but he never got the uh, Nobel Prize. But he was nominated for the Nobel Prize for I think two or three times, Nobel Prize in Literature. And he many people called him as uh, a great poet of uh, French. But for you know, he didn't write a single poem for almost twenty years. So he was, you can say, a little bit idiosyncratic or eccentric also, you can say. Okay, so here it is. So here, here is the dialogue with the self. Paul Valéry and Monsieur Testi. This article is written by Ernest Bevan, Jr. So here it is. In Monsieur Testi, Paul Valéry created a character who was to remain his cerebral conversation partner for most of the poet's literary life. I was trying to reduce myself to my real qualities. I had little confidence in my means and found within me, with no trouble at all, all I needed to despise myself. But I was strong in my infinite desire for clarity, in my contempt for convictions and ideals, idols, sorry, and in my distaste for facility and in the sense of my limitations i had made myself my uh, an inner island and spent my time exploring and fortifying it monsieur teste was born one day of a memory then recent of those moods so here uh, Valerie, uh, Valerie is saying of how he created Monsieur Teste. What made him find uh, find this character? So, in the uh, in the one way, this character was born from his attempt to look within himself and find out his real qualities. So this, you can say it's quite autobiographical, but not in the sense that it's a, not a memory or not a remaining of his old self. This is a unique process, all right? So this is something new. Let's see what, uh, what, what happened. Conceived in 1895, while Valéry studied law at the University of Montpellier, Teste was introduced to the French public in 1896 with the publication of La Soirée avec, avec Monsieur Teste. No more was heard from this creature of pure intellect until 1924 when La Lettre d'Amelie Teste and La Lettre d'Un Ami appeared, followed in 1925 by Les Ergons du Bourg. When Valerie died in July 1945, he left a series of five fragments involving testing, which were included in the 1948 Galimard edition of Monsieur Testi. The Testi cycle, as it is known today, is composed of the four complete and the five incomplete sketches contained in that 1948 edition. Since it spans virtually the whole of Valerie's career, the Testi cycle presents some unusual evaluative problems. Most commentators have been quick to note the autobiographical elements of the work, but have too readily identified Teste with Valéry, only to let the problem rest. So he is saying here that four, four, five cycles were there in Valéry's time. Valéry was a writer and a poet, but there were some four cycles, and many people identified uh, Monsieur Teste with. Uh, Valery himself. Whether it is justified or not, let's see. Teste is simply the most persistent image of that unknown man, his author's consciousness. But since Teste was also a vehicle for Valery's exploration of his own consciousness, and since that exploration was a lifelong process, one might reasonably expect that Valéry's discoveries would serve to alter his vision of Teste. In fact, the poet's view of Teste, his view of the possibilities of a figure living by pure consciousness and pure intellect, did change. 
the test day of 1924 was not the test day of 1896 when Valery had renounced poetry at Genova in 1892. So this was what I was telling you about, right? He didn't write poetry for almost two decades. He had gone so out of a dissatisfaction with poetry's capacity to satisfy the demands, his demands to know himself. All of his life, he maintained this primary interest in self-knowledge. And when he abandoned poetry, he was it was because the need to explore the processes which generated literary works was greater than the desire to create those works. So quite important, right? He wanted to know, he wanted to know, you know, Paul Valery wanted to know what are the processes, what are the processes which make one's mind become a, a channel for creating this creative activity of poetry. So his interest was in self-understanding and he wanted to find out what process of creation is when a poet writes his words it's not on the surface it's a deep process okay so la soirée avec monsieur testé as well as the introduction a la méthode de leonardo da vinci allowed him to examine the functionings of the mind yet the testy figure was still alive when valery resumed his poetry in 1912 so from 1892 to 1912 he didn't wrote a single poem because he wanted to understand what make him what makes him write a poem what makes him a poet what are the invisible processes going on within his mind so how Valerie's attitude toward test day had shifted, how he had come to view the possibility that a man could live by pure intellect and what he saw pure intellect as including. These are my concerns here. It's what uh, Mr. Bevan is saying. The pursuit of self-knowledge which occupied Paul Valerie was never a pursuit that divorced the writer from the world. Stereotypes of the inner directed seeker Shutting his monastic gates on life's banalities have no bearing on Valerie's domain. What mattered to Valerie was the question of how far man can understand those inner processes which mold his perceptual and sensual experiences into ideas and attitudes that in turn help form his self. The poet was exploring the process of transformation, how the external world is received and reshaped by internal mechanisms. His greatest poetry hinged on those in the, on this transformation process. La Chametière Marine, for instance, converts years of experience on the Mediterranean coast, Mediterranean coast, into a hazy poetic realm in which few of the visions are fixed, and all that is seen gives rise to speculation of life on life and death. And the song of Master Eid Idea examines the strength of an idea over its creator okay mm. valerie's principal theoretical interest was with those mental operations which occur between the visual sensual experience and its transformed product be that product a poem or an idea quite interesting right you know i was telling you about how to find your interest and uh, when you may think that you are going to lose something, if you don't write a competitive exam, if you don't be part of the race, are you going to really lose something if you don't understand yourself and you just blindly follow the competition? What is going to be your loss? Is your competition with them or is your competition with you? But what is the you which you are forgetting by being part of the race? That's what I was talking about, okay? The narrator considers Teste a person whose mind seemed to transform to its own use all that is a mind that performed everything suggested to it. In order to portray Teste believably, Valerie replaces him in a social context and looks at him from several angles. The narrator, the Valerie persona, shares Teste's concern 
and is fascinated by the man's powers of insight and self-control. Often his voice is hardly distinguishable from Teste's. Emily Teste, the wife, reveals something of the sensual moody side of her husband. So Emily is the fictional character, Monsieur Teste's wife. Okay. So she reveals the moody side of her husband. The master's young friend in La Lettre de Un Ami hints at the influence Teste has over him. When the latter describes an entry into Paris, Paris in a self-conscious style, revealing his own concern with mental workings. Finally, there is Testa himself in his logbooks, formulating theories, spouting epithets, and occasionally contradicting other characters' views. Okay. To understand exactly what Valerie created in Testa, one must first recognize some of the crucial affinities between the author and his creation. Okay, now, Monsieur Teste's uh, affinities with the creator, Paul Valéry, is being considered. The Teste cycle demands such a personal approach. Teste, through a, care, though, though a careful, shaped, fictional construct, was created by Valéry largely for the purpose of developing his ideas about how a man who knew only two values, the possible and the impossible, would behave. Wow. What? As the poet said of Teste, it is in this that he resembles me, much as a child resembles a father who, at the moment of conceiving him, was himself undergoing a profound change of being and was not himself. The Valerie Teste similarities begin in such details as the plan of Teste's apartment. Okay. So what was what was the Teste's apartment like? How was the chamber? There was only a candle and sitting around it, the dull sorry, I'm I'm a little more on time. 